Good morning, church. This video is for Sunday, March the 29th. The readings for today are Ezekiel chapter 37, 1 through 14, and the Gospel of John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Please read these verses either before or after you listen to our worship time this morning. We have a few announcements, just like we do on Sunday. First, the PV, our monthly newsletter, will be later than usual as we work to create prayers and activities for people to use during Holy Week. Second, due to the stay-at-home order, phone messages will not will not be checked daily. Our phone system doesn't allow for us to check messages remotely. Communicating to the office via email will get you the quickest response. Three, a reminder that council has suspended all in-person services, meetings, and events until further notice as we work with all our friends and neighbors to flatten the curve of this pandemic. Please do not enter the building without speaking with Reverend Carey. And last, number four, are you ready for some good news? Let's do some good news. Our new website is up and running. Many thanks to Linda and Gail for making this happen. You can see it at FCCRO.org. That's FCCRO.org. If you're following along, please join me in our opening prayer based on Psalm 130. Out of the depths of our current chaos, we cry out to you, O God. Let our voices be heard. Let the aching of our souls and hearts reach your ears. We will wait on you as you are our hope, O God. We wait on you as those who wait on the morning sunrise. In you, there is love, hope, and mercy. In you, we find our strength. At this moment, we lift our lives to you as we pray the words which Jesus has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have been observing to people lately that the Holy Spirit likes to work in advance. Seemingly random decisions made weeks ago are falling into place as I'd never imagined. Like picking this sermon series. The title of today's sermon is Dead End. And much of life as we know it in Michigan and around the world has come to a complete halt or a seemingly dead end. High school and college graduations are hanging in limbo. Retirements are being postponed. Jobs are being lost and salaries cut. Weddings and showers and birthday parties, events filled with joy that were being meticulously planned have come to a screeching halt. Churches, not celebrating Holy Week and Easter physically together. People are becoming sick and some are dying. Life as we knew it just a month ago is no more. Grief 
anger and fear seem to abound these days. All the things I listed and more can be and should be grieved. People and situations lost can leave us reeling. Telling people to buck up or comparing their grief to someone else's much larger grief is not helpful and can be downright damaging. In general, people don't like to talk about loss or grief and certainly not death. Instead, we subscribe to what I like to irreverently call the Bobby McFerrin philosophy of life. Don't worry, uh, be happy. And yes, I have just dated myself. Mr. McFerrin's song can be found on YouTube if you're interested. This idea that we should just ignore the small and large deaths in our lives and plaster on a smile just succeeds in people having to push down their griefs and emotions where they can do physical and emotional damage. I always like to point out that as we read in this morning's gospel, Jesus stood before Lazarus's tomb and wept. We don't know why Jesus wept, we just know how the people surrounding him reacted. See how much he loved him. What we do know is that weeping was not beneath Jesus, nor is it beneath any of us. When life comes to a seemingly dead end, we are allowed to weep. We are allowed to be angry. We are allowed to feel unsettled and anxious. Now, we should be very careful not to take those emotions out on each other, nor become hopeless thinking this is all we will ever have again. Patience, love, and compassion with a healthy dose of mercy and forgiveness should be the order of the day for all of us. We are all in unsettling territory. With all that said, God still brings a word of hope. The readings this morning are a reminder that it's not over until God says it's over. The reading from Ezekiel finds us in the middle of a valley surrounded by the dried bones of the dead. God commands Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones and they once again live. This is from the reading of Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 9 through 10. Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as God commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And then we have Jesus' friends, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Lazarus becomes sick, and the sisters call Jesus to come and heal their brother. But Jesus purposely delays his travel to come until Lazarus has died. All for the glory of God. After conversations with the sisters about resurrection, and a proclamation from Martha that she believes Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. He who was already bound 
and sealed in a tomb. This comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 41 through 44. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. In both readings, when faced with the impossible, God brings new life. It is a message we cannot forget in these troubling times. No matter what the future holds, God will help us bring new life to our world, to our nation, to our church, and to our individual lives. Even our physical death cannot keep us from the love and presence of God. Nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God that has been revealed in the person of Jesus. The new life we receive may look very, very different from the life we once had and lost. But God will not abandon us as we will once again find joy and peace and a new way forward. This is not some don't worry, be happy theology. It is the core of Christianity. Evil and death are ultimately defeated. God's grace cannot be put in a tomb as God's love is unending and God wants nothing more than all, all of creation to have life and have it in abundance. We have God's spirit two or three steps ahead of us, leading us forward. God knows the way out of this pandemic and it is and always will be the way of love. Stay inside unless you need to go out. Wash your hands, reach out to each other while keeping a physical distance so that we continue to share in our social connections with each other. Right now, loving our neighbor looks like taking the necessary precautions. All people are important. All people should be cared for. No one, absolutely no one is expendable in the kingdom of God. And so beloved, we continue our journey to Jerusalem and the cross. It will be a painful journey it will include weeping and grief. It will include suffering and sacrifice. What it will not include is a dead end. Amen. This morning, we pray for all those affected by this pandemic all around the world. We pray for our leaders to have wisdom and to make decisions based on the care of all people and to remember that all means all. We pray in joy for the wonders of technology, even when sometimes it's exasperating. We pray for those who are grieving all sorts of losses. We pray for those who do not have the means to fully care for themselves. 
the poor and the vulnerable. And we continue to raise up all those who are keeping our hospitals up and running, our first responders, all those in essential services. We ask God to keep them safe and we remember all those who have asked us to pray for them and all those prayers that we hold in our hearts known only to God. And so we pray. Hear the cries of your people, O Lord. Our help is in you, creator of all heaven and earth. Bend your ear to us and grant us the desires of our heart. May your spirit bring comfort to us all and your son bring mercy to our world. Amen. As you go about this week, may you listen for the hope of God and the urgings of the Holy Spirit in all you do. Grieve if you must, but never lose sight of God's eternal hope. May God's blessings be with us all. Remember that God loves you, as do I. Be safe, church. God willing, we will meet again via YouTube next week. Let the church say, Amen.